In the second part, let's talk about Buddhacitta. We will not discuss the specific methods of cultivating Buddhacitta here, as they are explained extensively in other courses. However, I'd like to emphasize once again that when learning Mahayana Buddhism, whether exoteric or esoteric teachings, you must have Buddhacitta. Without the Buddhasattva vows, one cannot receive the empowerment and therefore cannot receive the tantric vows. The tantric vows are the Samaya vows. Without the Samaya vows, practicing tantric teachings would be a waste of time. Therefore, among the three sets of vows, the lower vows are the foundation of the higher vows. Among them, the first set of vows is the vows of individual liberation, which are the foundation of the Buddhasattva vows. Without the vows of individual liberation, one cannot receive the Buddhasattva vows. The Buddhasattva vows are the foundation of the Tantric vows. Without the Buddhasattva vows, one cannot receive the Tantric vows. Therefore, studying and cultivating Buddhacitta is an indispensable and important stage of Mahayana Buddhism, including both exoteric and esoteric traditions. Actually, those who study and practice the Pure Land School should understand that the entire Infinite Life Sutra is teaching us how to cultivate Buddhacitta. Without qualified renunciation and buddhacitta, how can one resonate with the Infinite Life Sutra and generate great aspirations? Without buddhacitta, even if one recites billions of deity mantras such as Amitabha Buddha's mantra, if their motivation and practice are incorrect, they may immediately be reborn in the next life as fierce ghosts or evil spirits with supernatural powers. In better cases, they may become Dharma protectors, though they haven't achieved spiritual attainment. Those with strong anger will become fierce ghosts. Some people even engage in the practice of wrathful deities, which is even more terrible. When they recite mantras of wrathful deities and visualize, without generating buddhacitta, they may become evil spirits. Moreover, there is a misconception. Some people mistakenly think that simply reading the ritual of generating buddhacitta before starting their dharma practice and reading the dedication prayer afterwards means that they have generated buddhacitta and are engaging in dharma practice. However, I have to tell you that this is completely wrong. Reading the ritual is not equal to generating buddhacitta. While the rituals are about generating buddhacitta, simply reading them doesn't mean that you have truly generated buddhacitta from the bottom of your heart. To generate buddhacitta, we should begin with recognizing all sentient beings as our mother and recollecting their kindness. You should genuinely accomplish each step before moving on to the next step. The strong intention to repay the kindness of all sentient beings, boundless loving kindness, boundless compassion and great aspiration should be cultivated step by step in order to eventually generate buddhacitta. Only by studying and practicing step by step can we cultivate buddhacitta. It's not easy to genuinely recognize all sentient beings as your mother and recollect their kindness. If you haven't studied it, you won't understand it. Currently, we still lack compassion and have strong anger. Nowadays, some people rashly visualize wrathful deities and intensely recite their mantras with the intention to curse or defeat others. 
they have turned these sublime esoteric practices into black magic. Generally, Ordinary people won't be reborn as fierce spirits, but those who recklessly recite the mantras of wrathful deities are likely to become demons. What a pity! Those who have realised no self in person or have generated Buddhachitta will never end up like this. Therefore, no matter which Mahayana tradition you practice, Buddhachitta and the view of emptiness are indispensable. I believe that when every genuine master gives Dharma teachings, especially when transmitting the practice of deity mantras, they will definitely emphasize the cultivation of Buddhachitta. However, nowadays there are many self righteous people, which is problematic. Some people, after reading some rituals or books on Buddhachitta, believe that they have already generated Buddhachitta, but in reality they haven't, they are far from it. They just know the concept of generating Buddhachitta. There are many such people. The meanings of renunciation and Buddhachitta are profound. Only by personally experiencing and cultivating them in daily life can we understand their greatness and necessity. This cannot be comprehended merely through listening and contemplation. In China, most people haven't encountered qualified spiritual teachers and many people simply study by themselves. Female practitioners are relatively better because they have better faith. Many male practitioners cling to their own knowledge and views. Why didn't you attain enlightenment in your past life? Because you cling to your own knowledge and views and don't want to follow a good spiritual teacher. You are arrogant. After reading a few books, you are more inclined to believe in what you have realised by yourself. Moreover, some people are arrogant and think, in the Dharma ending age, how can there be qualified spiritual teachers? They believe that there are no qualified spiritual teachers and that it is enough to rely on oneself and simply read sutras by oneself. Such people are followers of the two jewels. In the Dharma ending age, there are fewer and fewer qualified spiritual teachers, so we should cherish them. On the other hand, this is a very good era, and we are fortunate to be born in this era. Now, it's the time for the Dharma to flourish and spread. We have the Dharma and the lineage, so you should have faith. In the coming decades, the Dharma will be widely propagated and spread all over the world.